This is my mama. On YouTube. There's Noah. Drive, Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to his channel. Did you drive, <laughs> yes. The GTR. <laughs> you wanna ride? You wanna drive it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Ah. Sorry. Say hi, Noah. What's up, guys? Hey. Um. I just wanted to do this video away from like everybody to a place that kind of started my. I don't know, like addiction to cars, right? Like everything that we love to do here. Um, yeah, no, this spot here, if you guys know where downtown Gilbert is, where the Ramadas are, um, you guys should come visit it. It's like a cool little spot to do little car meets and stuff. But obviously, with the car scene getting a little rowdy out here in Arizona, um, things change and we had to evolve. But nonetheless, um, I just want to say thank you for everybody for supporting our business in two weeks like it's insane how much we've grown and how much inventory is available for you guys and I just don't know how to thank you guys other than letting you guys know that we have the biggest inventory of motorcycles, UTV, <laughs> ATVs, things like that and even stuff for your cars that are going to be coming out dude like it's it's so insane and um, I know I'm young and I don't know if you guys seen the last video, Believe in Yourself, but I would say this is gonna be like the second part of Believe in Yourself. Um, at least my side of the story. Um, I didn't get here, well I didn't get to this, I didn't get to get, I didn't even get to get any of this stuff um, with any help really, other than the people that I met. And you know, my parents would help every once in a while, but they weren't like, like rich, rich. And I mean, like I have friends who are like well off and stuff like that. Um, you guys know who you are. I know you guys are laughing behind the phone right now, <laughs> smiling. But um, no man, like to this point, it was just literally just putting my mind at focus and just realizing like what I needed to do, where I wanted to go. Um, no, I didn't go to college at all. I just graduated with, um, you know, normal diploma. Insane, right? Back in 2014, yeah, I'm 23. About to turn 24 this year. Um, but a little story on this whole thing. And my buddy, Jeff, you can check out his channel. And I'll leave his Instagram somewhere here on, on the video. But he told me, you know, it's okay to kind of like tell your story of how you got to this point or what I'm doing now, you know? And I, and I didn't really want to to kind of go into depth in that because one I don't know it's just I don't like I don't know I just don't like doing that stuff but I know there's some people out there who think that my parents gave me money to do the business to do any of this stuff to get to where I'm at right now I mean yes they were there um, to like help me you know mentally and things like that to get me into places where I've been but as I tell you guys my story I want you guys to kind of listen close to kind of understand where I came from. I'm not born in the US, none at all. Not born in Mexico. <laughs> no, I'm not Japanese or Chinese. My parents aren't rich. I don't have rich uncles or anything like that. At least not that I know of. Um, I was born in the Philippines and it's a third world country, yo. Um, <laughs> I remember in the Philippines where I grew up, um, we'd go down these stone staircases Right, I'd help my grandma, my aunt, my cousins, and everybody um, grab water. We go up the road a few miles down. We'd hop in a jeep or jeepney, for any of you Filipinos that are out there, and we would go get water. We would go to the market. We would go every day and get food. Right, fresh food. Oh, love it. I miss it. I really want to go back, and that's another reason why I'm doing this stuff is just to go see my family again. You know, and. Yeah, it's, it's far, <laughs> I don't mean to cry, but it's just, I haven't really taken the time to look back on how far I've really gotten, <laughs> and as you guys listen to my story, you guys will understand why. Uh, yeah, it's just, there's been a lot that I've been through growing up and stuff, and I know like, it's, not, it's not as rough as other people and stuff, I know people have it worse, and some people have it easier. And um, 
I just want to let you guys know that you can do anything you want. Golly, man. You can do anything you want because no one can stop you other than your motivation inside. I don't watch back through this. I'm gonna laugh. But there's people here coming in the cars, but it's whatever, you know? Because they see a GTR, they're like, oh, holy crap. Insane, but yeah, so. Um, yeah, you know, you guys can do whatever it is that you want. Just make sure you have determination, believe in it, have faith, you know, everything. Give thanks to to the Lord above, man. And um, just hang on to the good people, you know, and, and hang on to your family. Because you never know when things, when things go sideways, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. So let me go ahead and move to another spot. But... And let me tell you guys essentially where I started and everything and and where and how far we've come, you know, how far I've come and where I want to take this business for you guys and and uh, the direction that I want to help change the car industry or auto industry <laughs> that has helped change me and, and get to where I needed to be or want to be and we're still we're still growing. As you guys know, Believe in Yourself is supposed to be a series where you guys follow us on the journey that will will get us there. Or essentially, you know, we're we're um, we're well off. We can help our families and things like that. Give back to people. But yeah, here we go. Here's some cars. You're gonna see it pass by. But yeah, it's insane, right? Um, pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, so let me go ahead and move to the other spot. Um, I'm just going to places that kind of mean a lot to me. Kind of tell you guys my story, so. Let's move to the next spot. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to the top of this garage here. Um, still downtown Gilbert, but this is where pretty much all the night stuff happened. You know, a buddy of mine named Colton took me here, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go to the top of that thing right there. Let me go ahead and update you guys. All right, cool. So. I'm gonna do about everything like, uh, you know, where, like I said, where places kind of mean to me and uh, kind of led me to where I needed, wanted to be at. Put me in the same situation I'm at right now. Um, so this is the downtown Gilbert garage. This is the original one. There used to be shutdowns, Gilbert shutdowns, dude. This thing was like legit. This used to be like uh, Tokyo Drift. I don't know. It, everything would be lined up. Cars would be parked like this, man. Cars would be lined up everywhere. It was amazing, man. And then of course, you know, just like I said, every spot out here in Gilbert gets ruined by, by kids and stuff like that and things like that, you know. Um, but yeah, so this is just another spot. You know, people would come in here, we'd all hang out, hang out up top, then it got a little crazy. People would do burnouts upstairs, people would crash, there'd be people getting into accidents and it just got out of hand. And, you know, I kind of agreed with the, with the authorities about shutting it down you know being a little bit more strict on it but that's that's okay you know um, but yeah so I mean with that being said you know like for another reason why this spot kind of meant to me means a lot to me is just the connections and the people that I met um, yeah I met a lot of people in this garage man it's insane from from like super like high-end influencers to like the most coolest or like most smallest kind of people you know what I mean like not like small as like I mean like people that are just normal people you know like you just meet them you never know you, you become friends with them and then next thing you know you're breaking bread at your table and stuff and you're eating that's the kind of people that it's just like you know it's insane man but um, a little bit more on the story right so so we'll continue of like how I grew up we moved to the States uh, I was five years old. Most of you guys know 9-11 when that stuff happened. Um, dude, it was like, maybe we were in the States for a couple years or so, I'm not sure. I just remember that saw them planes go through the buildings and stuff, man, the buildings, and um, the whole nation changed, the whole world changed. Um, you know, people were more scared, scared to do things, scared to go out and adventure and just make a living, but, um, I was in Maryland, you know. Um, Christmases there were great, dude. You know, everything was fun. Everything was was getting there. Um, again, like I said, you know, we had 
me and my sister had toys. We had the old computers with the dial up and everything like that, man. Golly. And my fascination actually started with cars there. Everyone's gonna say this whole movie, obviously, just because it's so iconic now. But it's also made fun of, whatever. But the Fast and Furious movie, right? This is what I remember when I first watched this. I was sitting, I came in through the hallway, the hallway of our, our military housing where we lived. And my parents were like, hey, look, check this out. There's this movie, right? We had Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza, Pizza Hut, whatever you guys want. You can imagine whatever you're eating, right? And um, I was sitting there, and next thing you know, I hear that music, right? Like that, the whole car, the green eclipse, blah, 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 all that. And my parents were like, oh, like, oh, Joshua, like my mom, right? She's like, oh, Joshua, look. And the whole heavy, like, Filipino accent. And um, yeah, man, it is, it kind of just fell from there. And then Need for Speed, Need for Speed games. You know, Tokyo Drift movies, the other movies that came out after that, it was, it was insane, man. Like, that's really where my love for cars kind of developed. Didn't really know what I was doing, you know, other than trying to copy people. Duh, cause like, you know, you cut when you're little, you copy like the older, your older peers and stuff like that. So that's why you set an example, right? So, um, with that, you know, I'd play Need for Speed on the ground too. I remember playing that all night, man, playing it online. Customizing cars, making it like, I don't know if you guys know the term rubber banding your cars in Need for Speed 2, or Need for Speed Underground 2, but I don't know if you guys remember that, but whatever. If you do, comment, like the video and stuff like that, let me know. Um, but yeah, so from there, second grade came along, man. You know, um, growing up, you know, you kind of, you just kind of feel it, you know, because you need more things to go to school. Like you need more stuff. And just things like that. You ask for more things, you know, and as you get older, you kind of understand like how money works, you know. Parents, my parents kind of kept it away from me just because they don't want us to worry, you know, and I appreciate that growing up because I didn't really understand it. I didn't understand why I couldn't get this and someone else could get it or why my buddy down the road got like the green machine, you know, and we couldn't get it or the freaking, um, you know, those little cars with the with the pedals, with the batteries, you charge those things. Man, I love those things, you know? Always wanted things, you know? Like, but, oh, there's a truck coming up. So, let me pause this real quick. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, truck was coming there, diesel, you know? Pretty cool. You know, if you love trucks, we have trucks on our website and stuff like that, truck stuff. So check that out, but. <coughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, with that, like, you just start to question kind of things, you know? Like, why can't I have this? Why can't I have that? Or why do they have this? You know, I didn't really care. I was like, I had my video games. You know, I had my little Fast and Furious cars, little Hot Wheels cars. And I was I was excited to play football outside, you know, with my like neighborhood friends and stuff like that down the street. I don't think anybody plays outside anymore. But yeah, so, you know, growing up, <coughs> when I was like about teenager, you know, kind of started questioning a lot of things, you know, I got into a lot of arguments. <laughs> Kind of a lot of the arguments with my parents and stuff, man. And that's something I wish I could take back. And uh, here we go again with the waterworks and stuff. But you know, that's that's another thing that motivates me to keep going is because they knew what they wanted. So, you know, I mean, obviously, I know what I want. I didn't know what I wanted. I thought I knew what I wanted. I mean, even now, I still don't know what I want other than than you know, gaining this and and like helping everybody else and especially my family and giving back, you know. Um, so, I know I'm just rambling, but it's, it's, it's how it is. I love media, so whatever, okay. So, um, <clears throat> I would get in a lot of arguments with my parents, and I don't know, just from my teenage life to growing up, you know, I kind of made it hard for everybody, made it hard on myself, and um, yeah, I didn't get to drive until I was 18. I had to, I had to wait until I lived on my own, but, uh, let me go to the next spot really quick. That means a lot to me too, and um, and we'll go there. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more, um, you know, of what that is. So let's go to the next spot. All right, guys. So this next uh, ooh, this next spot here, I don't think you guys are able to see this, but this park right here, this park that I'm at right now, it's wild. Um, it's still here, but here I'll park the car. I'll park the car. 
I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this part. Alright. When I ran, when I, yeah, when I ran out one night, um, this part right here, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but this is the park bench that I slept at for the night. I had my jacket, my hoodie from like my ROTC, my ROTC thing. Man, the lights aren't turning on. Oh, this isn't where I slept, but I don't think these were even here at the time. Um, but yeah, so this park bench. Dang, I wish you guys could see this. So, try this light like this. All right, so the park bench, jeez, I can't even see. I think I'm in the sand now. All right, so that park bench, right? Um, used to be right here, or it is right here. I'm gonna shine it this way. I don't know if you guys can see that. Here, let me get closer. Let me get, let me get, let me get closer. So, this here was the park bench that I slept at that night when I, I got kicked out, or I kicked out when I ran out. I slept here at the park, and the reason why this spot means a lot to me is because one, it was kind of the point where I was just like, I gotta do better, you know? Like, I knew at that point that everything was gonna be on me, but again, like I said in the beginning, you know, I was hard on my parents and, oh, Honda, Honda. But, um, you know, I don't regret that. But, I mean, at this point, it's just like, you know, even when I got kicked out, I just didn't know where to go. Me and my parents would always argue, or at least me and my dad. Um, I just had nowhere to go, you know? So got kicked out. Um, and that was it. So yeah, that's, that's why that's why this spot just means a lot to me. Is because it's like, it was the, I wouldn't say most bottom end because the next spot where I show you guys this house, um, that was like the bottom, the bottom for me. And I mean, this spot right here is pretty much feels like where I just didn't know what I was gonna do. Didn't think I was gonna get, didn't even think I was gonna own a GTR. GTR wasn't even on my mind. A business wasn't even on my mind. Um, not even going to school was on my mind. Like, I don't know, it's wild. But yeah, we'll go to the house. I'll show you guys and, um, and you guys will know more about my story. So <laughs> the next spot, you guys, it's, I haven't been there in years. So bear with me if I break down it. <laughs> Break down again like I did um, last night when I was recording the first section of this. But, you know, I just want you guys to know that believing in yourself and having faith, bro, and just keeping that light. And you just got to move forward, man. You just got to move forward. Take every day, improve on yourself, and, and just make it happen, you know? So um, I'm going to get out of here. It's kind of dark anyway. But, yeah, we'll go to the next spot, and um, I'll show you guys from there. So guys, um, this house, or this next spot that we're going to, yeah, this is day two. <laughs> yeah, I had to cut it short, it was getting late. But um, this house that we're going to, I haven't been to it in years, man. Um, and I'll get to that story and everything, but this house that we're going to was pretty much where I had to live when I got kicked out from my parents' house because we couldn't we couldn't um we just couldn't come to an agreement you know it's wild and uh i don't know i haven't been here like i said in years since i was 18. <laughs> it's been a minute so i'm gonna turn off the lights here really quick so you guys can see what i'm talking about just uh all these memories coming back i don't even want to roll up to the house right now just a lot of bad memories you know I don't even know who lives there. I don't know if there is, but um, yeah, I'm gonna stop right here really quick. We'll flip the camera around so you guys can see. So, 
that house right there. Ooh, let me put this down. There's a car. This car. I don't know how people take about filming, but that house right there, where that white car is, that. That house, um, I don't know. That house was, I guess, the ending point before before everything else happened. Here, I'm gonna get out of the way. I don't wanna stay here. Just, uh, before I continue the story, I'm just gonna move around. I'll show you guys really quick here. That's the corner house right there. But, uh, park away from that but um yeah you know uh, <laughs> all these people's garages are open it's wild um i just don't want to stop but yeah man when um man it's heavy <laughs> like i said i haven't been there in a minute um and that house, man, made a huge difference. Good and bad. Mostly bad, but I would say good and bad. It taught me a lot. That house was where I got arrested. Not because of what I did. Well, I mean, it was kind of like what I did, but when I was 18, um, a few of my friends were like, Yo, one of these guys I don't really talk to anymore, nor do I want to put him back in my life at all. But, um, you know, he came up with the idea, going around and, you know, doing some bad stuff. And, like a week later, man, a couple weeks later, cops came to the door and, um, yeah, man, went to jail for a week. <laughs> I mean, for some people, some people might mock the week, but you know, one second is too long in there. Um, and it's just something that no one should ever go through just because they don't have anyone to come through, you know? Like, especially now these days with social media, people just bullying people behind the keyboard, uh, depression, things like that, man, it's wild. I've seen, I've seen crazy stuff happen because of that stuff, you know? And, um, Yeah, it's wild, bro. It's wild, guys. It's uh, that's spent spent a week in there, and uh, I just want to leave this place real quick um, before I continue. This is where family is important, right? Always, always, always have family first, and the people that you love, of course, first. But it's okay to block out some of those bad people, you know? Um, if you have no place to go, there's other places to, to seek help, you know? You don't, you don't have to end up in like a drug house or like a drop house. And that's pretty much what I found out after, um, after the whole incident, you know? Figured out that the house was a drop house, a corner house. Don't know if there's any like anything with, with any, of, any other legal stuff that was going on there, but I had nowhere to go, you know? And, we graduated out of high school already, and you know everyone's doing their own thing, working. You know, um, but I'm not I'm not saying that you know. But if you need help, man, just reach out to the people and let them know. Don't be don't be quiet about it. You know, just let them know that you need help. And uh, with the right group of people, you know, like I said, good people. With the right group of good people, everything will pan itself out. I gotta thank my uncle, I gotta thank my parents for helping me, you know, that's that's where they helped me the most, if you guys are really wondering where they helped me, no, they didn't help me buy this car, they didn't help me get my first car, they didn't help me do anything, you know? I mean, as you guys saw, like, it, it takes hard work. There is no secret to it. All these people out here saying, click on this link, click on that, click on any of this no it's there's no secret to it it's just hard work and dedication and believing and having faith and just surrounding yourself with good people you know 
there's there's no formula to it there's no scam there's nothing none, none of that you don't have to pay for a stupid course knowledge is free man it should be free because it's up to people whoever whoever's watching this is people like us who decide to make decisions make moves you know move forward with the decisions the dreams that they want because it's up to them you know you can give them you can teach them everything but if you're not motivated to use what you've learned or what you're learning to get to where you want there's no point so why why should why should people now these days pay for a course that's why again that's why i'm saying this is why me and christian are making these series is so that you guys can you guys can understand that you shouldn't be you shouldn't have to pay for these stupid business things i mean i didn't go to school i mean you know i didn't go i didn't go to school i just graduated did you guys know i did maybe a few certifications for like it but that's that's about it nothing else nothing nothing over the top i don't have any student debt you know just normal credit card stuff because <laughs> you know when i was 18 19 people <coughs> you don't consolidate that stuff or you know handle that stuff i mean you'll have like two to three grand i mean that's not bad but for some people it grows you know but man, i just want to leave this place you know it's kind of hard but we'll move to the next spot um well, actually we'll go to my parents house and i'll show you guys i'll show you guys where my longboard is and my bike i'll show you we still have i still have it the longboard at least i don't know about the bike but yeah cool next spot what's up Say hi. Ah! Say hi, everyone. No, don't show us. <laughs> Look. So, what's up, guys? Hello. Ah! So, what's up? That's my dad. He's right here. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, so, um, like I was saying, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the skateboard. I already pulled it out of the wall, but this is it right here. This is, ooh, that's the skateboard. I used to ride that from where that house was where I show you guys. And um, yeah, that was far. That's like 15 minute drive from here to there. Um, but yeah, I was making $50 a week at Safeway. If that, I was like maybe making $30 and oh man. But yeah, so as you guys can see, you know, I didn't grow up in a big fancy house. Um, none of this stuff. I wouldn't say that my parents didn't want to help me. It's just they couldn't help me, you know? And I kind of, and I understand that now, on a financial standpoint. Obviously, from you know what I've what I've learned over the years, um, you know, it's wild. So don't think that just because you don't have your parents' help or that you know you don't have money to do this. Like you can do everything. You got to start small, and you got to build things up. You know, um, making fifty dollars an hour. Uh, or fifty dollars an hour, fifty dollars a week at Safeway. Went to Sonic, you know. I was like my, maybe my first real, real job because I actually made more than a hundred dollars. Um, and then from there, you know, um, like I said, after where I grew up and stuff, you know, the house when I got kicked out and stuff, um, I had to move to California. I don't know if, if I don't think anyone knows about that, but I moved to California for a few months to try and start school out there. And, um, you know, my parents, my parents couldn't financially give me everything that I wanted to. And I think that's why I was mad. But, you know, I kind of understand that now from being older. And, uh, and I just feel bad for all the things that I did, you know. So, mom, if you're watching this, it's cheesy, whatever. You know, I just want to let you guys know I'm sorry for the way that I acted. I'm not going to cry, bro. Not gonna cry, but that's why I'm working hard now, you know? Hard work pays off and everything like that, and, um, you know, went from from that thing, the, the longboard, to freaking GTR in five years, man, from when I was 18, 23 now. It's wild. So, after I went to jail, you know, lived out in California for a few months, tried to start school, parents couldn't help, you know, they couldn't afford it, obviously. Um, just like I said, they they couldn't just financially do it just because to help out my sister and things like that. The school was just expensive. And not a lot of people know this, but I was accepted to Embry-Riddle, right, on on half a scholarship, not a full ride or anything like that. But um, Global Security Intelligence was the degree I was going to go after. It was a $180,000 degree, no card, nothing. Had no way to get up there. 
So I had no choice. I, I couldn't go. Couldn't go. Couldn't go to ASU and things like that. I just didn't have the money, right? Um, so after California, I had to come back. Got a job at Best Buy. Learned about business and how numbers work and how to communicate and how to talk to people, how to handle a, a million dollar department, how to handle a multi-million dollar store, things like that. Um, from there, from Best Buy, I went to a car dealership, learned even more about numbers and how financing works. And then, uh, you know, now I'm a finance manager, kind of. I handle just underwriting stuff like that at, uh, at, at, a few, at, a, at this place. I don't really wanna say, you know, too much because this is just like a life story thing, but, um, you know, going from from nothing to having something to having more things, you always just want to learn how to give back, you know, whether it be knowledge, whether it be giving the five dollars that you had left in your pocket to help, you know, the people that you love or to help someone else. Um, just always give back. It's always good, you know, and. Um, There's just a lot of stuff that I wish I could take back you know, growing up. Because I didn't, I didn't really understand. And uh, like I said, now I get it. Like, I, I understand. I understand where they're coming at financially and stuff. But please, people out there who who need help who just don't understand, if, you're, if you guys are younger, like if you're in the teenager and, and you're looking at this video now and wondering like how to get there and how to do stuff, please, please. Thank your family, because um, things can be different tomorrow, you know. Um, but yeah, um, to leave it on a positive note, you know, I'll show you. I'll, I'll let you guys know what kind of cars I had, so uh, and things that I came from. So, on board, right? Got a bicycle, <laughs> bicycle, and then I got a motorcycle. No, got a Geo Metro. I think POS thing didn't run right. Um, got a motorcycle van, a GS550 1980. Dude, that thing's so dope. I wish I could, I wish I could find another one and just refix it and build it. And then after that, after that thing broke, um, four or five hundred. Thing was amazing too. I thought it was the coolest dude ever. Installed like a 12-inch sub that caught on fire. Car didn't catch on fire, obviously, but got rid of that. And then from there, got a 2016 Ford Focus. Coolest thing ever. First car ever, right? Didn't like it. It's like, whatever, I'm gonna get a Dodge Dart. So I got a 2016 Dodge Dart a couple months. And then between the Dodge Dart there, then I picked up a 1996 Nissan Sentra. Boxy as hell, coolest thing ever. I thought that was dope. Learned how to drive manual in that car and everything, right? Talked to Jules how to drive manual and we learned together and stuff. Other than that, so after the Nissan Sentra, picked up the convertible 370Z. That one got rear-ended by a drunk driver. Or which is our neighbor now, back here. Crazy, wild thing. Then got the Orange Z. So if you guys have been following me long enough from there, that's where you know I've had my build. From the Z, got the um, Jetta, Volkswagen Jetta that Jules is built now, after we traded in the Dart. And then from there, we got the R33, got rid of the Z, picked up the two motorcycles, right? The CBR300, CB300R. Um, and then picked the, the GTR, and then the Corolla. Oh, and then other than that, the Iron 83 before <laughs> before the Corolla. So, you know, it's just wild. You know, um, like I said, my parents didn't help me co-sign. They didn't do any of that stuff. I mean, not that it matters. Like, like again, like I said, financially, they just couldn't couldn't help, and I couldn't understand that. So, me and Jules built something together. You know, I'm not saying that it's just all me. It can't be. It can't be all me. I had. She is so loving, like Jules is so amazing and stuff. It's just insane. So if you're watching this baby, I love you. Thank you for everything that you do. I know I don't, um, you know, <laughs> I know I'm always working and stuff, you know, with things like this, but I appreciate you so much. And my mom, I love you. My dad, I love you. My little sister, I love you. Noah, you're awesome. Little brother, I love you too. Um, biggest people that have helped me in my life, right? I just want to give, give them credit and stuff. My buddy Tyler, if you're watching this bro, thank you. Um, my other best friend, his name is Brandon, thank you. Um, Jeff, you know who you are. Both Jeffs, thank you guys for being awesome. Um, yeah man, it's just, it's crazy, you know. So going from, from jail 
from that house to doing all this stuff, you know, we just want to let you guys know that anything is possible, bro, and, and girls and, and everyone else. A business might not be for everybody. Obviously, it's not. Um, if you want to become a firefighter, like what Christian was saying, make it the best. If you want to be the best accountant, make it be the best accountant. If you want to be the best teacher, be the best teacher. Help change the world, you know, and um, just make it the best. Do what you want, do what you love, and always believe. Uh, never take no for an answer if it's really what you want. Don't let a piece of paper determine um, where you have to be in life. Don't let someone's opinion on you or how you work, you know, dictate where you can go and can't go. I don't believe in that at all. Um, so, like I said, we were making this series here to show you guys where we're at. Update on the business. We just closed on Affirm and Sezzle, which are like two financing options that you can purchase our items with on site. We've added over 20,000 products already on our site, and we also have more things coming out soon. Um, so check out the previous video and Believe in Yourself, episode one, um, and check out the promo video, check out our site, you know, subscribe right here, and check out everything else, man. I love you guys. You guys are the most supportive, um, you know, and everything. Our two weeks, we've hit our, our sales goal, and gross-wise, gross-wise, we've hit our numbers of 500 bucks, um, so. But yeah, subscribe right here, check out the previous video, and uh, see you guys on the next one.